lot of people have asked what I did for my Knight Rider scanner light on the front of the car. So I thought I'd show you how I went about wiring this. So first off, we have to take the frunk out. We've got seven bolts to remove. First, we want to remove the mat from in the frunk. Two of the bolts are underneath here. First thing we'll do is remove this bolt up by the washer fluid reservoir. Then we'll remove the bolts that are behind the grocery bag hooks. And we've got two more down here on the floor of the frunk. The last two are in with the latch. So you remove this panel, it just pops up. Unplug the wire that goes to the button and remove these two bolts. Then we've got to make sure we remove this small panel that covers the air intake. And lastly, we'll just pull the frunk up. It pops loose on the sides and just lifts right out. Very easy. I noticed something while I had the frunk liner out. My car does not have the pedestrian speaker. It does have the place to mount the speaker, but I noticed this extra wire, which happens to be right above where that speaker would go. I think this might be where the speaker plugs in. You can see where the speaker goes down there. And then the wiring harness is right here. So once I add those custom sounds, I'm definitely going to pay to have that speaker added in here. I'd love to have some Knight Rider sounds going on. So when I installed this, I wanted to make sure that it was easily removable. So what I did was strapped it on here with a few black zip ties. And then the wire runs up here. And I just zip tied this to this other wire here. I ran the wire up here and then zip tied everything in place here behind this set of wires. Uh, just in case any water got under the frunk, I just wanted to make sure that um, water wouldn't be getting on my component. So I stuck it in a plastic bag and taped it off. I ran the wires along here, plenty of zip ties to keep it organized. It's hard to see, but there's a rubber grommet down there where two orange cables go through the firewall. And I stuck my wiring through that same grommet. So then I've got those wires coming through that rubber grommet up there. And you can kind of see the orange cables that come through there. Now I've just got these temporarily zip tied together right here. Then I've got it run right here to this battery pack, which is a 12 volt lithium ion rechargeable battery pack. Easy access to the switch. I can reach down and turn that off and on easily. And then if I need to take this battery pack inside, I've got Velcro on the back. So I just stick that there, nice and secure, easy on off. It's got LEDs to show how much battery power is left. This battery pack lasts a very long time with just the LED scanner lights. Now I can unplug this and take it inside to recharge it or I've got a 12 volt adapter that I can plug into the accessory port inside the car and recharge it that way. I just thought it would be easier to take inside when it runs out. Really simple setup. I just decided I didn't want to deal with um, going into the existing wiring or tapping onto the battery or anything. So I figured an external battery would be the best choice um, just to keep everything separate. I can turn it on and off as I like. Easy to remove. I'll put a link to the battery pack as well as the light that I use down in the description. Hope this helps somebody else. Um, make sure you check your local laws if you want to run this. Um, I do know that blue or red lights are illegal pretty much everywhere, so skip that. Mostly I just use it if I'm charging, if I'm in a parking lot um, at a show or something like that. Don't really drive around with it on the street. I, I don't really wanna call attention myself the car stands out as it is. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.